Hey guys, in this vlog, I'm going to talk about the master developer's code. This is a set of five or six rules that I've learned over the last two decades as a coder and developer. I started writing code in 1994, 1995. It's so long ago, I forget exactly when. And I've developed many apps since that. So if I were to summarize the top five or six lessons over that period of time of being a pretty consistent developer, these are the lessons. I'm going to call it the master developer's code. Yes, and code is a play on words. The master developer code, code number one. There is no such thing as the best programming language. If somebody comes to you and says, Java is the best programming language, or JavaScript is the best programming language, etc., etc., etc. There is no such thing. It does not exist in reality because what the best programming language is depends on the type of work that you're doing, the type of project you're working on, uh, what space you're in in terms of uh, business level. There's no terrible programming language out there except for Ruby. That's a joke. It's a private joke being the Ruby guy is Ruby. Even Ruby has its place in certain circumstances. It's actually a pretty good language given the right circumstances. You see, if you look at any individual language, they each have their strengths and weaknesses. People who've been watching my blog know this. C++ is blazingly fast at runtime, but it's blazingly slow to write. Python is super slow at runtime, meaning when it's running. When the app, when your Python program starts running, it's really slow compared to C++, compared to PHP. But Python has a huge amount of flexibilities because the ecosystem in the Python community is vast, so it's very, very popular. It's the most popular language, as far as I know, when it comes to AI machine learning, and there's a huge future in that, of course. When it comes to web app creation for small, medium-sized businesses, I believe PHP, Seven is king. Nothing beats it overall. Not that it's the best language overall. It's just in that space, in that niche, it is best. So the master's programmer code, the number one code is there's no such thing as the best programming language. The second code in the code for the master program, I didn't, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Number two, number two, relax. You don't have to know everything as a master developer. In fact, as you become more and more experienced as a developer, you're going to forget more and more and more of what you knew. For instance, I know a fraction or I remember a fraction of the frameworks and the libraries and the languages that I used to know like the back of my hand. Ask me today about some Java library, I would have to look it up. I don't remember anymore. Why? Because I've programmed in many other languages since then, and you forget, you mix things up. Python has a different behavior from Java, which has a different behavior from JavaScript in terms of functions or methods. It's okay, you're gonna forget. You're not gonna remember everything, doesn't matter. It's the mastery of the fundamentals that separates the master coders from the noobs. Now, what's a master coder? 10 years plus. What's a beginner? A total noob. One to three years. What's an expert? Three to five years. And when you're five to ten years, you're in that nebulous state. Ten years, you're probably a master, if, assuming you're consistently coding. Fifteen, twenty years, you're becoming even better. Again, it depends on how much you part participate in things. I remember I used to see these martial artists who used to have uh, tenth dan black belts and giant bellies. And uh, it was clear that they haven't really trained much in the last 30 years. But because they've been around for 30 years, sitting around drinking beer, eating pizza, people say, hey, these guys, they're, they're masters. They've been around for 30 years. Well, 30 years of not coding and 30 years of coding, there's a big difference. So anyway, don't worry about having to remember everything and about learn everything. Master developers know that they need to learn on a need to nerd basis, need to nerd basis. You learn whatever framework, whatever, li whatever language you need, depending on the job. That's what I would do. I would walk into a project as freelancer. I'd sit down. I'd say, okay, 
bing, bing, boom, what do you need to know, what do you need to do, what infrastructure you have, okay, what are your resources, all right, boom, bang, boom, Bob's your uncle, this is what we're going to use. Sometimes I use PHP, sometimes I use Java, sometimes I use .NET, sometimes, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you get the idea. Master developer's code, <laughs> code number three, concentrate on your fundamentals. I touched off on that in number two. And people who know my vlogs know this is the case. Concentrate on fundamentals. Concentrate on fundamentals. Somebody just emailed me recently and say, I'm trying to learn Ajax and it's killing me, Steph. I don't understand. I, I, should I give up? What should I do? Oh, I just, it just, oh, I, I can't get it, Steph. What should I do? And um, I figured to myself, hmm, maybe they don't know JavaScript too well. Maybe they never studied the basics of the web. So I emailed this person back. Hey, did you... Uh, do you know a little JavaScript? Did you ever study HTTP? She writes back. No, I never learned that. I was just trying to learn Ajax from the scratch. There you go. You got to learn the fundamentals. You got to learn the fundamentals. If you learn the fundamentals, then all those project courses that you see, all the projects, even, I dare say, you would go, let's say you want to learn Node after you know your fundamentals. If you know your fundamentals, you go to the Node website. You don't need a course on Node. You just go to the Node website. Right on the first page, you know, quick start guard, you know, 10 steps, bing, 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 boom, boom, bing. It's not that hard if you know your fundamentals. It's really hard if you don't understand HTTP. You don't understand the request response model. You don't understand about the stateless nature of the web. You don't understand uh, what object orientation is about. You don't understand DOM crawling. If these basic things, there's a whole bunch of other things, if you don't understand these things, it's going to be really hard for you to learn AJAX. It's going to be really hard for you to learn Node.js. It's going to be really hard for you to learn any framework that has to do with the web. You have to learn the fundamentals. So learn your fundamentals. All right, principle number four, quatro, quatre in French. Number four, uh, develop good communication skills, verbal and written. Learn to speak clearly, succinctly. That means not too long. Learn to write clearly, tersely, meaning not too long, simple, short bullet points, short paragraphs, learn to communicate well. Your career as a developer, whether you're freelancing or looking to work for somebody, will shoot up much more quickly if you spend the time to develop your communication skills. That includes being able to listen to people intently. Those are the rare developers who do that, and when they do that, they see their careers shoot right up. Communication is huge. It's a huge part of it. If you know your fundamentals, and let's say you know, for example, PHP Laravel, PHP and the Laravel framework, or Node.js and JavaScript, and you know that, and you're thinking, hmm, should I spend learning Angular, or should I learn React, or maybe I should learn Vue? No, you should actually build projects and learn to communicate better. You do that, your career is gonna advance much more quickly. You're gonna make much more money as a freelancer, guaranteed. Again, this is based on my 20 years experience. The master developer's code. Number five, Cinco, Sank. Number five, be open to other languages and other frameworks. A developer doesn't look at other language and goes, JavaScript sucks because I don't like the way they overload variables. It's terrible. And you ignore JavaScript. Or Python sucks, but you know, you get the idea. Every language has its merits. Every framework has its merits. Every one of those things has their downsides as well. You have to look at the array of technology you have out there, the array of languages, the array of frameworks, the array of libraries, the array of operating systems. You gotta look at all these things as just tools. They're just tools. Just like a carpenter will look at different, I'm forget carpenter, a musician. A great guitarist, they'll have their favorite guitar at a particular moment in time, but they look at all guitars as, you know, I'm going to use a Stratocaster in this situation. I'll use a Gibson here. I may go acoustic. I may go classical. It depends on the use case. depends on what you're doing. Be open as much as you can and be, uh, we'll say, tolerant of all the different languages that are out there because they all have their purposes. And I know I've been there when I was a new, with only a few years experience under, under my belt. I was like, I'm, I was a militant Java programmer. But I learned through hard experience but you'd walk in to a prospective job. For me, it was freelancing all the time. 
it, you know, the language and the framework and library I chose depended on the type of project I was working on. I'll give you one example. I was doing a job for a company that was selling a retailer for high-end software and tools for 3D animation and uh, that kind of stuff. And they worked exclusively on Windows platform. They had, uh, they worked with Excel and they worked with Word and everything was sort of designed that way. So they wanted to be able to uh, take a spreadsheet with their latest information about their product store, all the products that they offered and the pricing, the SKU numbers, and all this. They wanted to be able to upload onto a server and then they wanted an app on the server to be able to read that Excel spreadsheet parse out all the data, and then build the shopping cart system, that was the e-commerce e store, if you will. Well, it was the e-commerce store, rather. Uh, live on the web. They didn't want to have to go through a web interface. It had to be all based on this Excel document. And that's it. That's, the, that's how their business run. I wasn't going to go in there and say, no, nope, you got to change the way your whole business operates because I don't want to code in this language here because uh, forget about it. And uh, that's not the way the real world works. So I had to look around and I had choices of different languages at the time, you know, whether it was going to go with Python or PHP or Java or Ruby or .NET, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I couldn't use .NET because they were on a hosting company that didn't support .NET. So I had that problem, right? But they weren't going to change. They didn't want to change the hosting because they had a long-term relationship with them, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, long story short, I was able to do with Java because I was able to find the right libraries the, that I could interface and talk to Excel and extract the data and all this kind of stuff. Long story short, I had to choose my technology based on what the client's own infrastructure had what, uh, and what, what they demanded, what they demanded. It didn't matter if I thought that uh, .NET was the best at the time. It did, for, yes, and for that project, by the way, if I could just use a Windows server, .NET would have been by far the best solution there, but they weren't going to have it. So as a developer, eh, you can't just look at the language or the framework in isolation. You have to consider the big picture. You have to consider the, the, the business requirements around all this. Remember, at the end of the day, what's driving software development, the reason you are getting paid big money as a web developer or a web designer is because there's a business behind it who's making money with it. So you have to accommodate to their business needs. It's not the vice versa, except for rare situations. So there you have it. That is the uh, master developer's code, as I see it, based on my 20 years experience. I could go on. The code could go on. There's a lot of other rules, and I've talked about in different vlogs. But I think if I was to identify the five key things that will get you uh, most ahead in your career, whether you go work for somebody, you become a freelancer, or you start your own uh, company, and you utilize, you utilize software to automate processes in your company, or you maybe create your own SaaS, your own software as a service that you can sell into the market. I've done it all, and these are the five rules that I've picked up over that time. I hope this is useful. Bye-bye.